I don't know if the recording is started. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the lecture. Therefore, today is 21st of July, 2020. We have the summer course. This is the lecture on our week four, week four. Therefore, the course is CIV 481, the Reinforced Concrete Theory. You remember we had some examples and concepts of the lecture before. And now we are continuing the, to see the lecture. Uh, you see in the lecture uh, that here we have the topics of the today's lecture. We continue to see the ultimate strength design or UST method, and we see the design of the rectangular sections and also one-way slabs because the design of one-way slabs are similar to the design of rectangular beam sections. Only for few difference about the reinforcement that in uh, one-way slab we have in two ways, and also the other things that we have is in uh, one way slab, we consider the minimum value of reinforcement different from the rectangular section, and also we distribute the uh, reinforcement in two directions, and also the minimum height that we consider for beam is a little different for one way slab. Yes, in the next exam, uh, slide, we see one example. In this example, which we should determine the ACI design moment capacity, which is MU, as you remember, or phi times MN. For the beam shown in the figure, and the properties of the materials of steel and concrete are given. F prime C is 4,000 PSI and Fy is 60,000 PSI. You see the dimensions and the amount of steel bars are given. The total height is 18 inches. The effective Deep depth is 15 inches or D. B, the width of the beam is 12 inches. Three number 11 steel bars we have that we go to the, uh, you remember, we go to the table and find from there the amount of steel area, which is 4.68 square inches. Here, we see the solution of the example. First, you should check the steel percentage and compare the existing or the design steel percentage with the row mean and row max. You remember that row mean and row max, the minimum percentage of steel and the maximum percentage of steel bars we can find from a table which is at the appendix of the reference book and it's table A.7. From the 
table, we find row max is 0.0181 and row mean is 0.0033. We calculate row by dividing AS over PD. Therefore, we apply the values of AS, B, and D. We find the existing row, actual row is 0.026. We compare that with row mean, which is greater than row mean, that's okay. And also we compare with row max, that is uh, less than row, is greater than row max as well. There was not okay. It's greater than row max. It's not okay. It's not acceptable. Greater than row max. Therefore, let's see what is the given the solution of this example by the reference book. But if I were a stop here, I say no. Row max is Rho is greater than Rho max is not acceptable. But we continue to check the other things as well. What does it mean? When Rho is greater than Rho max, it means that we don't have the tension control condition. We have compression control condition. What does it mean? It means that Rho is greater than Rho max, uh, still is safe. But the concrete is not safe. If we have failure, if we have, what do you check later? The failure is on the concrete and is a brittle condition and there is risky because if we have failure in the concrete is suddenly happens and the people that use that room, that the spacing are under risk and they will be killed. Therefore we should check carefully. Okay. We calculate the strain at the steel, epsilon t, computing value of epsilon t. We calculate A, we calculate A, which we had formula for that. We apply the value of ASFY, which is given, and divided by 0 0.85 at prime CB. We find the value of A. The value of A is 6.88 inches. And then we check, is it beta 1, 0 0.85 or not? How? If the primacy given is 4,000 PSI or less than that one, beta one is 0 0.85. Yes, we see that the primacy given is 4,000 PSI, therefore beta one is 0 0.85. Having A and beta one, we can calculate C. C equals A over beta one. By applying the values, we find a value of 8.09 inches for C. Having D and C, we can calculate epsilon T, which is a strain at the steel bars levels. Epsilon T, by applying the formula that we have from the similarity of the strains in the strain profile of the section, epsilon t equals d minus c over c times four per thousand, three per thousand, point zero zero three. <coughs> By applying the values, we find epsilon t equals zero point zero zero two hundred fifty six. 
which is less than 0.004 or 005. Section is not ductile and may not be used as per ACI section. I told you because from the beginning it was clear when rho is greater than rho max, it means we have the compression uh, condition and we have problem in the concrete and we should not use that. But here it's shown that. There is not tactile and it cannot be used as ACI section 10.3.5. Let's see another example. <clears throat> in this example, again, we should define the moment design moment capacity of the section MU or phi MN for the given the same values given for F prime C and F phi. But you see that the dimension are changed. The total height is 18 inches. D is 15 inches, but B is 10 inches. 3, 9 size bar is given. Therefore, we calculate, we find from the table the area is 3 square inches. Let's see the solution now. Yes. Again, we first check the AS with the AS minimum and AS maximum. Therefore, rho we find from this formula AS over PD, we apply the values, we find rho equals something about 0 0.020. As I told you, again, we find the values rho mean and rho max from the table 8.7 from the appendix of the reference book by applying the epsilon t this value. That is for that. Therefore, rho is greater than rho mean. That's OK. And also is lesser than rho max again is okay. Therefore, we controlled that the section condition is tension control. Therefore, is, for design, we need that. Rho is less than rho max. Therefore, if we have failure, failure is due to a steel bar, not concrete. That is not risky, is safe. Because failure in a steel happens with a large deflection and no risk for the people. And for finding the value of phi, which is the strength reduction factor, we should calculate a strain at the steel bar, which is epsilon t. For epsilon, epsilon t, you remember that we should find c. Excuse me, professor. Yes, please. Uh, for the rho, is it not uh, greater than rho max? Like the value uh, we got for rho is 0 0.02. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. I think there is something wrong here. Yeah, I think. Yeah, thank you very much. But 
you just check, calculate again the value of a row here. Okay. Perhaps there is a mistake here. If not, again, I think it should, the calculation should be a mistake. This is the typing error of the book, perhaps. But imagine that is less than row marks. Thank you for your kind remark. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Professor. Thank you very much. What's your name? Nabil. Thank you very much, Nabil. Thank you. You're welcome, You're welcome Professor. Good. Therefore, here, imagine that row is uh, less than row marks. We continue in this condition. Therefore, <clears throat> here, when we calculate, we need C. For C, we need have beta 1 and A. Okay, for A, we had formula for the rectangular section. We apply that, A S F Y over 0 A B 5 F prime C B. And we find for A 5.29 inches. For beta 1, it's 80, 0.85 Y because the A prime C given to us is 4,000 PSI. Pay attention, I am repeating. Last uh, final exam that we had in the spring summer, I have given beta 1 more than 4, 4,000 uh, uh, 4, PSI. Therefore, in that case, beta 1 is what not 0.85. We should calculate that. And I think half of the student make mistake in the class. Therefore, you calculate that if it is 4,000 PSI or lesser, that's okay. If it's greater than, you should find this one from the formula given. And then by dividing A by beta 1, you calculate C. C is 6.22 inches. By applying in epsilon T, we find the value of epsilon T strain at a steel bar is something about four per thousand. It's greater than four per thousand, but less than five per thousand. Because always we compare with five per thousand. Forget this four per thousand view. Because epsilon C is uh, less than 0 0.05, we see that the beam is in the transitional zone. It means that phi is less than 0 0.9. And the, from the figure or formula that we had, we apply this interpolation formula that we have, and we find that's slightly zero than zero nine is zero eight hundred thirty six. We apply this one. Therefore, we buy phi here. First, we calculate mn nominal resisting moment plus t times z. Z for rectangular section, pay attention, it's not for other sections. We apply the values, we find a value in inch kips. We convert inch to foot by dividing by 12. And we find the value of mn in foot kips. And we find the design ultimate moment, which was MU, and MU equals 
phi mn, we apply the phi that we calculated, and mn, we find the value of mu. Therefore, this is the answer. Let me see, we have more students in class. Yes, we have 30 students now in class. Now let's start another chapter. In the next slide, we see chapter four. Uh, excuse me, Professor. Yes, please. Uh, in the previous slide, um, please can you tell us the values for phi, like which values are constant or which one is the formula on this? You mean the value for phi? Yeah, like, uh, you see this we got 0 0.043423 which is epsilon t yeah right? so which yeah. one is for 0 0.02 and 0 0.65 look you calculate uh, this one and compare with 0 0.05 epsilon t first okay and then you go if it was less than 0 0.05 phi was 0 0.9 yes. but it is uh, greater than that, you should apply this formula. Okay. You don't uh, divide uh, 0, 65, etc. It's a co the complete formula give you the answer directly. Oh, okay. You are constant, you mean? It's not constant. It depends on the value of the epsilon t that you applied here. Okay. For each epsilon t, we have one value here. This epsilon t. Yes. If you go to the original formula that is given or given in the figure 3.5, here, this is epsilon t. The formula is not constant. Formula is a function of epsilon t. By applying any value for epsilon t, you will find a different value for five. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, let's start uh, chapter four. In chapter four, we see the design. Design of what? Design of rectangular beams and one-way slabs. You remember that when we use ultimate strength design, USD, we had load factors. You remember that they had 1.2 for dead load, 1.6 for live load, and for the others, we have like that. Now, let's see what are the load factors at the first of the chapter. The ACI code presents the load factors and combination. We have load factors and load combination, or load cases and load combination. Load cases is dead load, live load, earthquake load, etc. Load factors 1.2, 1.6, 1.85, etc. And load combination, they are combination of these load cases. Therefore, we see the load factor and load combinations that are to be used for the reinforced concrete design. The required strengths that we call with, we show with that one with U for ultimate or load capacity ability of a particular reinforced concrete member must at least equal to the largest value obtained by substituting into ACI equations that we will see from 9.1 to 9.7. The following equation conform to requirements of the International Building Code, IBC. We have UBC, Uniform Building Code, that's American, and we have IBC, that is International Building Code, as well as to the value required by ASCE, American Society of Civil Engineers, SE, Structural Engineering Institute, 710. Now let's see what are the 
load combinations. Here, you see in the book is given, but here you see a set of load combinations. And you should apply the maximum value that you find here should be the maximum value. One load combination, just consider the dead load. 1.4 times dead load. This one case, load combination. 1.4 was used before even Nesto 1.2 even in the old version of the code. But in the new version, they changed for the combination of dead load, live load, 1.2 and 1.7. It was 1.4 and 1.7, now it is 1.2 and 1.6. Plus 0 0.5, let's LR and S and R. Let's see what are those. LR is live load for roof, S is for snow, and R is for rain. The definitions are given here. You can see that are given here. U, the design or ultimate load, the structure needs to be able to resist. D is for dead load. L for live load. LR, roof live load. S, a snow load, and R, rain load, wind, W, for wind load, and E for seismic or earthquake load effect. Now we go to the load and combinations. We saw two cases. The third one is U, ultimate case, is again 1.2 times dead load, 1.6 times live load. <clears throat> or one of these, which one is uh, governing maximum? Plus live load and half of, or half of wind load. When you say load, you should consider which one is maximum applied there. The other load combination K is 1.2D, one wind load, one live load times 0 0.5 times one of these values. And so on, U, 1.2 dead load, one earthquake, live load, and 20% of a snow load. The other one, just the dead load and wind loads. Last one, just the dead load and earthquake load. Therefore, you calculate all of these load combinations and apply to find the maximum stress at element or member or structure or tension stress in the concrete and avoid that. Pay attention when you say earthquake load, earthquake load is not one load case, it's four case. Earthquake, if it is a plan of a building, imagine this is plan of building. Earthquake may come from the left. This is one earthquake case. It comes from the right, another case. It may come from top, this case, side, or this side. If this is X and this Y direction, <coughs> we have four cases for earthquake. One, you can say, comes from in the positive direction, earthquake in x direction. Another one in opposite direction, minus ex.
and it may come from the positive direction of y. It may come from the opposite direction of y direction from, and you consider minus earthquake in y direction. Therefore, you see that only for E earthquake, this formula, you have four cases. O, E here, for example, they are the same. Therefore, you see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven load combination is not the case, it's more than that. Because for wind, for earthquake, you should consider like this. Plus EX, minus EX, plus EY, and for W is the same. Plus WY, WX, and minus, etc. Four condition for this. Therefore, if you want to design carefully, you should consider all the load combination. Otherwise, it's not complete. Now let's see one short, uh, shortly one example about load combinations. This is one example for load combination. The compression gravity axial loads for a building column have given estimated with the following results. The value of dead load, roof live load, live load, wing load, and are given. Even for wind load in compression and in tension. Determine the critical design load. Therefore, we should find the critical design load combination. We apply the formula that we saw. Look. Here, for example, 93 is divided by 3. I told you plus minus earthquake or compression tension that this one divided by 2. This is divided by 2, like that. And then by applying the values and the factors, there is some values are found. But the answer is the larger value among the existing value, which is 690 kips from load case 9.2. And point two, this is the maximum value. Therefore, this is considered. When you apply the software, like it have SAP, I don't know, Adina, and the others, you, Nastaran, you apply and sees everything. You apply the load factors and load combinations, the value of dead load, live load, earthquake loads, and the computer considers all load combinations in the design. Now let's go to the design of rectangular beams. Okay, let's see the design. You can see that first beam proportions have some values for D and B. This is important when you consider, for example, when you have A section, the consideration that you consider for B and total height H, or from the center of gravity of the 
एस पी आपन जनरल बी शुड बी लेस दैन एच एंड इज बेथर बी बी समथिंग बिथवीन टू थर्ड ऑफ एच लेस दैन दैट वन and greater than 1 over 3 h 1 third of h in general for design if there is not any restriction we consider b equals h over 2 for different condition we can apply this range but in general case we can consider b equals h over 2 the book given some value is little different But in general, these values can be used. About the deflections, you remember that for deflections, for one way or, or we see again the table, for one way slab, when we have the simply support condition, the height of the beam is limited to l over 20 by giving a minimum height to the beam we control the deflection and no need for calculating the deflection therefore you remember that when we had beam it was l over 16 not l over 20 or we see in the table Yes, for deflection control, we see next table everything. But if we consider a minimum thickness for the beam, or one a slab, no need for deflection calculation. are not required therefore by applying h mean no need for calculation of deflection or control deflection we have more students adding to the class i don't know they added yes they joined 32 students we have at lecture okay <clears throat> Therefore, in this table, in this table, we see the minimum thickness of non pre stress beams or one way slab. If we apply this value, no need for controlling the deflection. Unless, if we don't control them, we should calculate the deflection. Therefore, these are given us the minimum thickness, which we write H min. For H mean, we had two rows. One row is here. If we have one way slab,
when we have the simply support condition for L equals uh, H minimum equals L over 20 when we have one way slab it's L over 16 <coughs> When we have a beam or a ribbed one-way slab, not one-way slab, ribbed one-way slab, that's like a beam. <coughs> if you have the continuous beam or continuous slab at the one end condition, the value is less, L over 24 or L over 18.5 for the slab or for beam. What does it mean? It means that if you have one continuous beam like this, and it has several spans and continues <coughs> this is the one end continuous this one is one end continuous Because from here doesn't continue, from one end continues. And the last column, which shows the both end continues, is here. That you have from two side continuation. And now you see that the, for the middle spans, again, H mean can be reduced. L over 24 for a slab, or L over 21 for beams. For cantilever case, we should consider bigger and greater dimension of beam actually it's doubled if we have a cantilever like this or cantilever you see that for if you have a slab cantilever a slab h mean should be l over 20 is two times of L over L20, L over 10. L over 10 is two times of L over 20. We have the greater size this. For beam, it is L over 8, not L over 16. If we compare simply support and cantilever, cantilever height is double of simply support as H minimum. Therefore, if we apply H mean according to this table, in this case, no need. for calculation and controlling of deflection. No need for deflection. No need for deflection. Otherwise, we should calculate deflection and control that. In the design, always we try to apply the H minimum from the beginning. Okay, 
Another uh, practical method for estimating beam size is to assume a minimum overall depth H equal to minimum depth specified in table 4.1. I think when you can apply that uh, table is enough. After MU, ultimate design moment is determined for all the loads, including the estimated beam weight, the section is selected. It means H and B. If the dimensions of the section are significantly different from those initially assumed, it will be necessary to recalculate the weight and MU and repeat the calculation. What does it mean? It means first we calculate one value for B and H, First, we can estimation by H minimum and B, we calculate it. And then we apply the loads and we calculate the MU. And again, we see MU applied is less than the MU, the capacity of the section or not. If it was applied is less than the capacity, it was okay. Otherwise, we should change B and H and repeat the calculations. But when you compare the applied MU and the MU, the capacity of the section, the difference should be in order of 2%. It's written 1 or 2, 2% is okay. Not more than that in the design. I, my experiences for the very important buildings, it was 2%. Even for normal resisting building, 5% may be okay as well. 5% over design, no problem. But under design, no. Should be 0%. And then we calculate this section of bars we, from the formulas. And you know that we calculate the sizes, depends, number what. And you know that in this section, you should consider the concrete cover as well. What is cover? The reinforcing for concrete members must be protected from the surrounding environment that is fire or corrosion protection needs to be provided. Therefore, we consider concrete cover. I will show you in next slide. Here, you see one section. From the bottom of the steel up to the bottom of the section, it is clear concrete cover. But from the center, when you consider from the center of the bar up to the bottom here, it is not clear cover, it is cover. But from the bottom of a steel, it is clear cover. For the other side, again, we have the same. From outside, it is clear cover. And you should apply some minimum for cover from outside, every side. For side, this is two, five over eight inches minimum. For the, the other side, it is one and a half inches. Yes, you see the stirrups here. You see the main bars, compression and tension. This was one example that of how you calculate the distance, the spacing between. And 
the um, reinforcement walls and also the concrete covers. Now let's see one example. Design a rectangular beam for a 22 feet simple span beam. If a dead load of one kip per feet or foot, not including the beam weight, and live load of two kip per feet are to be supported. Use a prime C4000 PSI, a by 60,000 PSI. What happened here? It's excluded the weight of the beam from dead load light load. I don't like that. Normally, you should consider when you say dead load, you should consider the weight of the beam. But here, separately calculated not including, is excluded. In this case, we should calculate the weight of beam as well. Okay, for solution, first thing is assumption of the H and B. For starting, you should have one value for H and B. It's a simple span, simply support beam. Therefore, we have a simply support beam with a span length of 22 feet. Okay, when you say uh, we have simply support beam, you remember that H mean, according to the table, minimum. It was L over 16. But here is say assumption H L over 10. Actually, he considered L over 10. Suddenly you say, why? There is a mistake here. Why consider L over 10, not L over 16? Therefore, the answer is that minimum is L over 16. You can, say, can assume greater than that one. L over 10 is greater than L over 16. No problem. It didn't say H mean, it says H. Estimation. But here, this is H mean. Therefore, it's possible when you assume we had, for example, a large amount of loads and you will change later the edge. From the beginning, you consider a little greater. Yes, so L over 16, you consider L over 10, no problem. L over 10 is greater than L over 16, no problem. This is the minimum, that's not minimum. Okay, you find H equals 2.2 feet. And it's about Multiply by 12, you can consider 27 inches. Round that, we round that. And then you have, this is H, 27 is H, total height. But you remember that B was from the center of the speed bar up to top, this was B.
The difference between D and H, it was concrete cover. If you consider concrete cover 2.5, Two point five inches. In that case, D is twenty four point five inches. Okay, we estimated value for H. I told you in general we consider B equals H over two. Divided by two, you can consider something about you don't say that this is 13.5. You say, say, or take 14 inches. Now we have one value for B, one value for H. But it's not final values. After applying the laws, we see which dimensions are required. We calculate the beam weight self-weight of the beam. This is the unit weight of beam. And this is B times H times one foot length of beam because the volume scale sorry this was the conversion factor for changing the foot square and inch square this is the unit weight of the concrete gamma One hundred and fifty pounds per QP. You say I don't understand what how they calculate. Don't worry, no worries. You may consider one uh, section of the beam and a length of one feet of that. Just one, one foot. Imagine that this is one foot length of the beam. This is for you. The length is one foot this is b and this is h the volume of this one is volume equals b times H times one foot. Because of that, I added one foot here. This is volume. Volume times the unit weight give you the weight. Because you know that weight equals the volume times unit weight, which is gamma. Therefore, we apply it here. And we consider for 
one foot length of beam. We consider unit because unit weight is weight of unit length. Unit length is one foot. We calculated the weight in pounds per foot converted to kips per feet and we found this value. Therefore, we should add this weight to the dead load of the applied on the beam. Dead load was one kips per feet plus the weight of beam for one feet foot length. Therefore, we have here WU. Why U? Because we applied the load factor 1.2 as well. Therefore, it's ultimate uh, weight. And NU for simply support beam equals W U L square over 8. By applying the value, we find the applied moment. Now, for this applied moment, we should check the dimension is okay or not and calculate the value of steel bars. Now let's go to next slide. Look, again, we should assume phi and check by the epsilon zero or the value of AS and rho. And computing rho from the expression that we found. This is direct method. We go directly to the formula. We had three methods. One was direct method. One was trial, trial and error. We calculate the MU capacity of the section and compare with the applied load. And third one was we use the tables that given in the reference book or ACI. But we prefer that we use direct method and find the row directly from this formula. We apply the value before that Rn should be calculated which Rn has a value mu over phi bd square. We find that one and apply in the formula. After application of the values in the formula, we find rho is less than 1%, something about 8 thousand and we select the reinforcement when we have as what to calculate is rho bd apply the values we find the value of as and by having the as value we go to the table and one of them you should select either the number or the size. Imagine that we say in the section we have three, the number is three. Therefore, you search in the table for this value and you find something around that is three number nine. And for this three number nine, you see the exact value of the area is three square inches. Three square inches is greater than the required one. That's okay. Should not be smaller than, should be greater than that, but not too much greater. Therefore, there are one discussion here. You can study and see that it goes to a little details, but forget that, let's continue.
Now we should check the solution. AS and rho, is it greater than rho mean or rho mass or not? When we calculate rho by dividing AS over BD, we find something about 8 per thousand, less than 1%. And from the table, 8.7, we find rho mean, and we see that the actual rho is greater than rho mean. That's okay. And compare with rho max and is less than rho max, again, that's okay as well. And now we calculate A for rectangular section and MU which is phi MN and MN was we have phi MN was T times Z Z for rectangular section D minus A over 2 by applying the values we find the values in inch kips we convert that to the foot kips. And this is the resisting moment of the section, this one. And we compare with the applied MU at the beginning when you calculate by using the load factors 1.2, 1.6, etc. And you see that the resisting moment or capacity of the section is greater than the applied one that's okay if it was inverse it was not okay you should repeat the calculation therefore i hope you understand the solution of this example now let's in the next example we see how yes, we you. apply different method yes please do you have any question yeah um so the final answer, it needs to be greater than 294.8? Or it has to be less? Yes, 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 yes. This is the applied load. And this is the capacity of the section. Also, always it should be greater. Always, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Otherwise, it collapse or rupture. Yeah. Always the applied one should be less than the resisting one. Resisting should be greater than that one. Okay. But if difference is too much, it's not economy. For example, we have a big size, less load. No, it's not economy. Yeah, it should it's be true. above that. And the tolerances may be 2%, 5%, not more. Okay. But always the capacity of the section should be greater than the applied load. This is safe. If there is too much difference, it's not economy. Yeah. You consider safety and economy. Yes. Okay, let's go to the next slide. In this slide, we determine the steel area when beam dimensions are predeterminated. We have B and B H by estimation, everything we wanted to find a row. There is, as I mentioned for you, three methods there are. One method was using table. It's not normal method, just the American used that. Because we use the formula, we use the try and error method. Okay, they are happy with that, they can do that. Because they have a lot of tables, they can do it. In this case, when we have applied load, we calculate the applied moment MU. We divide that by phi BD square. This is computed. And then rho can be found from the table. This is one method. You can use for checking, not otherwise for design is not good. And all the tables are given at 
appendix appendices A and B. The other method that I call that direct method is using and applying the formula directly. That we saw one example in the previous example. And you find a row directly from here. And don't forget that first you calculate Rn. And Rn was just this value that we use in the table as well. This is Rn. And Rn, you apply here. First, you calculate mu over phi bd square, which is Rn. And Rn, you apply in this formula. You find the row. And you compare row with row mean and row max, and then finalize the solution. Therefore, uh, I say this is first method for us, for me. This is first method. Second method is try and error, and this is third method for me. What is the second method? This is second method. That is the try and error, trial and error method or iterative method. In this case, you have one MN, MU, applied one. Light by considering the loads. And you compare with MU, the capacity of the section that you have formula for that. Y M N. That this should be Capacity should be greater than the applied one. Should be greater than that. But I told you the difference should be in order of 2% or 5%, not too much different. 2% to 5%. Otherwise, it's not economy. That's greater is okay, it's safe, but should be economy as well, not too much over design therefore let's see one example now the dimension of the beam shown in the figure have been selected for architectural reasons it means that we have the height and the width that's good for architectural purposes. Determine the reinforcing steel area by each of the methods described in the section. Why is written have been selected by the architectural reasons? It means that there's no estimation for that. Just we consider this value architectural purposes. No estimation. We then consider calculated even the H minimum and control F. We should do that. But here, not. He has not done that. Given the applied MU, this is applied one. And given the characteristic of the concrete and steel. This is a mistake here. This is a prime C, not FC. Okay, let's see now the solution. In this example, we use uh, different methods. This is applying the table, the method three. I called for you method three.
Okay, you calculate mu over phi pd square and you go from the table A.12 directly see which value is related to this mu over phi pd square and you see that row you will find from the table is something about five per thousand actually you know it's not directly you should interpolate why we need interpolation because this value that you found for mu over by with the square you don't you cannot find directly in the table you will find that one between two values therefore for first value you find one row row one for second one you go you find row two And for our case, by interpolation, we find the row. Therefore, it's not, table is easy, but it still needs one interpolation. <clears throat> when we found the row, you know that AS equals row times, this is row. Row times B times B. Therefore, you find the value of AS, 1.81 square inches. It's clear that you should check the row mean and row max, but here it doesn't. Did that. Okay, it doesn't do that. Therefore, here by having this value after controlling row min and max and AS and I max, we find from table six number five bars. In the table, the exact value of this area is given 1.84, which is greater, a little slightly greater than. 1.81, that's okay. And now this is the direct method. I call that method one, number one. We calculate first our n as we calculated here, they are the same. And we apply this Rn in the formula of rho you saw the formula of rho before and find the value of rho by application the values we find a value of 5.38 per thousand rho it is the same as we found in uh, here. Therefore, this is the second method, try and error. As I told you, you calculate MU applied and MU resisting moment of the capacity and compare that. For this reason, this is another indirect uh, thing. Assume A.
in the rectangular section in the uh, equivalent stress block of ACI. A is two inches. Assume. This is assume. Ass assume this one. And apply and find AS from the formula. You find 1.78 inches. And then again calculate A. This was assumptions first. And this is calculation. They should be the same. What you see that is slightly different. Is not equal to the two inches that you consider. Assumption was two. But you found 2.62. They are not the same. What we should do, we should continue and repeating the cycle of calculation. Again, and other new assumptions we consider 2.62 based on the last value we found for A. And here, by applying the new value, we calculate A again, AS, and calculate A again. We see that this time it's 2.6. Okay, you say they are close to each other. The assumption was 2.6, but now we found 2.66. These are close to each other. You say that's okay. What does it okay? Okay means that the last AS that you calculated was okay. This is okay. And we find for this value how many numbers and the size of reinforcement bar. Therefore, I hope you understand this is another indirect method for that. It doesn't consider MU and applied and resisting. It goes to the assumption for A first. Now let's see more about one-way slab. I told you the design of one-way slab is like design of a rectangular section beam by some very small differences. You say one way, what does it mean? One way and two way, etc. We have one-way slab and two-way slab. Why one-way slab? Because the bending is in one direction only. And we have two-way slab when the bending is in both directions. and the load distribution is in both direction. Let's see one figure in next example in slide. Here, you see here that if this is the span of one simply support the span, Let's call that L span length. But in the other direction, let's call this A
and this one B. If B is greater than two A or two L This is one way slap. If there's less than 2a, it is two way slap. What does it mean when b is uh, greater than 2a if you consider one strip of this slab which has a width of one foot or 12 inches with the width of one foot or 12 inches. Let me change the color. You see that if you have load here, Load is distributed in the shorter span here. Load distribution is only in one way. If it was two way slab, you have load distribution in two way, one way and the other way. But here in one way slab, we have distribution load only one way towards the shorter span. Shorter span is A, which is length of that. Therefore, we design this strip like a rectangular section. You see, this is the section is rectangular. And that's all, design this one. In next slide, you see another uh, figure from one-way slab. Look, this is one-way slab here. This part is one-way slab. Why? Because you see that B from here, and let me write here B, from the beginning up to end, if this is B, and from the um, distance from here to here is A, B is greater than 2A. Therefore, we have one way slab. In next slide, we see one way slab in two forms. If we have one slab, just it has two supports one from here and one support the other side there's no support here and here it's clear that if you have a bound or the load the load on this one is distributed only toward the supports just one way in other case, if I told you if the, this is, for example, B and the other is A is dif different, and one dimension is greater than the other two times the others, 
the load is distributed in the shorter way here. And this strip is a strip of one way slab. In this direction, it doesn't work. The load it doesn't transfer in long direction. I don't know. Let's see one example for the one-way slab. Design a one-way slab for the inside of a building using the span, loads, and other data given in the figure. Normal weight aggregate concrete is specified with a density of 145 pound per cubic feet. Therefore, the span length is given 10 feet. Live load, a prime C, FY is given. Live load is 200 pound per square feet. A prime C 4000 PSI and a by 60,000 PSI. Now let's see the solution. The first step we should find H and B, and as you remember, if we apply the minimum thickness given in the table that I showed you, we don't need to calculate the deflections. Therefore, H mean, you remember from table for the simply support one way slab, it was L over 20. We apply the L over 20. You see that the length is given in feet. Therefore, we should use the conversion factor, 12 inch, inches per feet, and then we find H minimum in inches. Therefore, now we start by assumption of the height six inches for the slab height. Therefore, if we consider concrete cover, <coughs> something concrete cover three four <coughs> over four inches or one inches because it is something about this one inch concrete cover minus six give us t5 <coughs> therefore according to the Dead load light of given, dead load. Here is not given the uh, overload. It's given dead load as self weight of the slab. You, come, you remember this was gamma, the unit weight of the concrete. And it is six inches times one times one and this is the conversion factor we find the l 75 pound per square feet and live load was given to us use the load factors 1.2 Two for dead load, 1.6 for live load. We use the ultimate 
load, which is 410 pound per square feet. Because it's a simple support one way slab, we use MU equals WU times L square for eight. We find the value and we find our end, which was MU over five BD square. We check the row mean and row max, row according to the given value. Or here directly finding row from the table and checking with row mean from table A7. We calculate AS by applying the found row from the table. This row is found from the table, comes here, and B and D. Why B was one foot? You remember, therefore we apply 12 inches. Because we consider one strip of the one way slab. We find AS, this is, pay attention, this for one foot length of uh, width of a slab. Therefore, we use number four at 10 centimeters, 10 inches. Look, this is for 10 inches. When we calculate AS, AS it is for one foot, 12 inches. There is a little difference, pay attention on that. And you com uh, convert that. And we check the maximum spacing, which is 18 inches, is okay. Therefore, when we have a plan of one way slab. Imagine this was one way slab and support was here, for example. This is the plan, plan of one way slab. Therefore, the main bars is in the shorter span in this direction. We need for the others a minimum reinforcement as well, which is considered from the shrinkage and also temperature. Therefore, transverse direction in the other direction, we use the shrinkage or temperature steel which is row minimum, AS minimum. Therefore, we apply the minimum value for row and we find this one. We use The first one we find for the main direction, which was the shorter span. The second one is for longer span, which is less value. And we check again the maximum spacing for that. That should be less than 18 inches. That's okay as well. For this case, Let's see what's written here. The number the size four bars are placed below the number three bars of the case. Why? It says that we consider a section here, section AA, for example. We 
Then in section AA, you see that this is the section AA of the slab. The main bars are in this direction. The secondary bars should be put over that in the other direction. Why? Because when we calculate D from the center of bar, we have bigger D. And this helps us for bigger resisting moment. If it was inverse, the secondary was below, D was less than that. So for pay attention, the main bar is below the other one. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Therefore, I put two link here that you can watch. It's very good for one way slab. And I hope you understand. If you have any question, please ask me. Otherwise, I could stop recording in Google Meet and you can ask your question. If you have question, please ask me now. If not, I will stop the recording. Any question? Let me, what is written by our students as chatting? Mm. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. You are welcome. Muhammad, Yusuf, and Abdul Razak. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. You're welcome. Therefore, uh, what about exam? Exam will be next week, Tuesday. We fix that. You're welcome, Farah. If I stop recording, and if you have any other questions, let me answer that. Yes, please write your student number here, and names as attendance, and also in the using, and also fill the uh, feedback questionnaire. All of them shows that your attendance. Thank you very much. I stop recording in Google Meet.